If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and go to training.mammothinteractive.com where we have tons of more videos just like this. Previously, we learned how to build a user interface. And in this lecture, we're going to learn how we can update the user interface with bindings. So join me back in your project. And we're going to pop open our game UI widget blueprint. Here, we're going to select one of our text items like the score, and we need to add a binding to it. To add a binding, we are going to go into the content section and under text, we have score zero and we can bind the text by clicking on bind and then selecting create binding. This will create a new function on the widget blueprint that will return the binding data for this property, which means you can bind data to the text. So if the data or the variable changes, the text will change with it. Hit create binding and you will see this new event graph appear that says get score text zero and return node. So this is going to be a binding. So now we have to edit the binding to actually bind to some variable. So I have my score text. Before I return the node, I'm going to break this link between the two nodes because first I want to perform some binding before I return my node. So my get score text zero, I'm going to get my game mode because it actually has my score. So I'm going to cast to my top down game mode here because this is the class that has the actual score. Now what object should I use for the game mode? Well, we're going to get our game mode via a function. So this will allow us to return the current game mode base. So this will get us our game mode and then we can return the score text node. But what should be the return value of the text of the score text? Well, it should be the score from the game mode. So from the game mode here, I can drag off a widget to access the game mode and I want to access its score. So we can type score and then we can get score. I'm going to take this variable and I'm going to drag it into the return node. The integer will be converted to text because the score is an integer, but the text node contains text. So there will be a conversion that happens from one data type to the other. And just like that, we have created a binding so that if our score updates, so will the text. We can save and compile this and then we can hit run to run the game. In the top left, we now see zero instead of score zero because our score is zero and the text node or the text box is bound to the variable of the score. So if I increase my score by one, my text will also change. Why? Well, because the text is now bound to the variable. So the text is mutable. It can change if the variable that it's bound to changes as well. We can do the same thing for the food remaining. I'm going to close my player. Then I'm going to go back into my game UI. So I have to just close my game UI and we can just reopen that widget blueprint. I want to select my food remaining this time. Under the content, I select the text of food remaining zero and I'm going to click on bind and I'm going to create a new binding. So we already have one optional binding that we could use, but that's for the score. We need to create a new binding for binding this text object to our food remaining variable. So I'm going to create a new binding here we have get food remaining text zero, which returns some value. I'm going to break the link to the return node. Instead, I'm going to do the same thing we did for the score. I'm going to access my top down game mode. So this allows me to reference my top down game mode. Which game mode do I want to access? Well, the current one. So I'm going to just search for get game mode. This will return for me the current game mode base. So this way we can access our game mode. And then after that, we can return a value to bind. 
what are we going to bind? We're going to bind the food remaining, which is a variable that exists in the game mode. So we can access the game mode that's returned and access its food remaining property. So we call get food remaining. So we're accessing our game mode that's returned by this node and we're accessing that game mode's food remaining. Then we'll take that integer and we will display it as the text in our text box. So we take that integer and we just bound it to our text. So now we can save and compile and we can hit play. And this time we have a zero on that top right hand side, which shows us the food remaining. Then we have 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. So now we're counting down once we have eaten at least one of our elements. All right, so there we have food remaining. If we want to set an initial value for food remaining instead of zero, then we have to do that in the game mode. So we can save and compile. We can go back to our blueprints and go to the game mode. In the game mode, we can access our variables, such as our variable of the food remaining. So when our game begins, we create a game UI widget and we add it to the viewport. We can also set the value of a variable like food remaining. How can we set food remaining? Well, we can get all of our food items that are remaining. And we actually already did this in a function. So if we go back to view our window of our components, then we can see all of our visual components. And if we go into our palette, then we can see of this game mode, our library and elements that we can add. We can also go to the details window or my blueprint. So in my blueprint here, we can see the different variables that we have and the different functions. So we actually already have a function called count food remaining, which is going to set food remaining. So if we want to count the food remaining at the very start of the game, then when the event begins play, we can add a reference to our function count food remaining. So we can just drag and drop it onto the event graph and then connect it to our execution script. So now when my game begins, I'm going to create a game UI widget, add it to the viewport and immediately set the food remaining. That way it's not zero at the very start. That way it actually is the food remaining at the very start. So then I can close my blueprint or you could keep it open and just hit play wherever. And now we have 18 here showing up immediately instead of zero. And that will go down whenever we eat one of our food items. All right, so there we go. That is how we can count how many food items we have in our game. And we can do that from the very start of the game. So we can try that again, we can hit run, we start with 18. If I eat one, you'll notice I have one, but 18 doesn't change. If I eat another one, then it changes. So what is the problem? Why are we not having that first food item being eaten? The reason we have that glitch is because of get food remaining. You'll notice here when we call get food remaining text, the binding, we do a cast to the game mode and then we just get the food remaining. But if we want to actually see the update immediately, we have to call set or count food remaining first, because that way we will automatically run the count. You'll remember that in the game mode, we have count food remaining, which is going to count all the actors of class food and then set food remaining. So this does the counting. If you just go directly through the variable, then you won't get that count immediately. You'll only get the count whenever you do call count food remaining, which we called count food remaining whenever, well, whenever we add here our game mode widget to the viewport, we then call count food remaining. But that's just when the widget is added. If you want to have that food remaining, be updated as soon as one food is eaten instead of after the second one, then you have to call the function to count the food remaining instead. So I'm going to break this connection from the 
game mode to the returning of the food remaining. And first I'm going to count the food remaining again. So to break this connection, you can right click or you can hit Alt and click once to break the connection. So hold the Alt key and click. Then I'm going to perform a new executable action and that will be to add a node of count food remaining. So I'm going to call the count food remaining first, then I'm going to return the score binding. The target must be a game mode. It cannot be the self. The self is the UI. So we must connect the game mode object that we got with the target for count food remaining because that is where count food remaining was created. So now we can see before we set the text of food remaining, we first count all the food. So now if you run the game, we start at 18 for the food remaining. Then we go to 17 immediately as soon as we eat a food. So now we no longer have that glitch. So we have to make sure we call our functions to update our variables. Otherwise, the variables won't be updated automatically. So that is how you can update your text in your user interface with bindings. Coming up next, we're going to learn how we can add text to the binding. So not just showing a number, but also showing text like score, food remaining. So join me in the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.